All right, we're Robbie Lawler fighting Nick Diaz at UFC 266 this weekend. And I guess the first question is, are you fighting Nick Diaz? I mean, this, there was a little bit of a weird circumstance come up during fight week that uh, all of a sudden the particulars of this fight have changed. Have you agreed to those particulars? Uh, yeah, I mean, Dave's uh, taking care of that on his end, talking to uh, Hunter, I believe, and just straightening things out and making sure everything's right. Dave, of course, you're talking about your manager. I mean, you've been in the sport for a long time. You were back in the day when, when there were all kinds of different things going on, right? I mean, I think it's, this sport has become a little more streamlined, but can you recall anything that's similar to this where uh, the weight class changes five days before a fight? Uh, no, never anything like this. Uh, I think I got like a week's notice. I think they contacted me like Saturday afternoon or something. Yeah, it's just poor timing and just it is what it is, right? Rob, what does that feel like? I mean, you've, been, you've just gone through a, 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 a training camp. You're preparing for a fight that's 170 pounds, and all of a sudden, seven days before the fight, you get a call that your opponent wants to make it at 185. What goes through your head? How did you take it? Um, when I was talking to Dave, I'm like, all right, let's go. Yeah. But, like, what's right is right, and we just have to figure the other end out, too. So it's like I'm always ready to fight. That There's no question about that, so... It's just making it right on the other end. Is there like, um, you see, I see this all the time in big fights. You don't want to concede anything to your opponent, you know? I mean, you're getting ready to go into an octagon and fight this guy, and you're not going to want to concede an inch in there, and so you don't want to concede an inch before the fight. And it just feels like, oh, I want this fight in five rounds. I want this fight at this date. Now I want it at this weight. Like, is any of that kind of, like, getting you boiling up a little bit? Where, like, I, like, I don't need to give this guy everything he wants just to get in the cage with him. Uh, no, because I'm not too worried about those types of things. I mean, my camp went well. I mean, uh, Jason Jackson did a great job of getting me ready. I'm sharp. Like, that's why I'm not bothered so much about the move up and weight because I, I know what I'm capable of. I know what I can do, and I know the work that I put in. From just a competitive preparation standpoint, I think a lot of people don't really realize. They're like, okay, well, now Rob doesn't have to cut weight this week. I mean, what, what would you have done differently had you known this fight was at 185 pounds the whole time? Uh, well, I wouldn't have got lost 15 pounds the month before I found out. I mean, I, I was fine. I was in good shape. I was pressing it. I wouldn't have ate. I would have ate more food. I would have not cut things out of my diet. I wouldn't have been strict on certain things and left a little bit more muscle on. There's like, and I get to the point like where I cut weight, it's all right, I'm losing the weight, I'm losing the weight. And then the week of the fight, your body's so finely tuned that you're almost force feeding yourself the week before to keep your weight up so that when you get here fight week, it comes off easy. You just restrict your calories and boom, you get your weight down, lose a little bit of water and you're good. So it's, for me, it's, I was eating a lot to make sure I wasn't getting too light and then for them to go up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 15 pounds, it's a huge difference when, I mean, a month before it, I would have been freaking fine. Sure. Like, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Again, man, you've had so many, you've had so much experience, you know, and you've had so much experience reading your opponent and different circumstances going into a fight. Why do you think he's asking for this, if you had to guess? No, I don't really focus on those types of things. Like, it's all theory, and it really doesn't matter. It comes down to this is the weight. Uh, I think my coaches and people around me, like, they like to, like, why is this and why is that? It's like, whatever. Like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to fight. So it doesn't really matter what his issue is. When you agreed to this fight, um, you're going to be fighting Nick Diaz. He's been out for six years. Nick Diaz, I mean, he's a beloved character in the sport. He also comes with certain just realities of Nick Diaz. Was there ever concern on your part? Was there ever like something, something weird is going to happen? Or like, can I trust this guy to show up? Did you ever have any of those thoughts? Uh, no, I didn't really have any of those thoughts. Uh, and then as the fight got closer, it's like the definitely went away. And then all of a sudden this pops up. But it's, no, I didn't really... After a week of signing, I'm like, all right, he's fighting, so. Okay. Well, and I guess that answers this question, but you, uh, you sitting here today, you have 100% confidence he'll be at the weigh-in, he'll, he'll weigh in, and he will show up on Saturday. You, you know that in your heart that that will happen. Oh, I don't put too much freaking stock in that. <laughs> like, I'm not putting too much mind and energy into that, but I know I'm going to be ready. Mm -hmm. 
What do you remember about UFC 47? I mean, it's wild, right? Like, like we're sitting here 17 years later, that fight happened right down the street, Mandalay. I mean, so much has changed. And then it's like, what is that like thinking about that first fight 17 years ago? Um, I don't really think about it too much, but uh, I did 17, 16, 15 years ago. But just like uh, looking back, how I made mistakes, how I felt in the fight and just living and learning and trying to figure out why I didn't get the job done and why he did. And uh, just part of my journey. Can you, um, how would you describe that Robbie Lawler that fought Nick Diaz the first time? Man? And that was a big card, Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz, again, on the Vegas Strip, you were a young kid. Like, who was that guy who fought Nick the first time? Uh, just a young kid who just thought he was just going to take over the world. And <laughs> that did not happen at that time. It kind of did. It kind of happened. Mean, later UFC on, champion. But yeah, I mean, uh, but at that time, it just wasn't my night. He took it to me and, and caught me with some good shots and finished me and... It was like, all right, how do you get better? How can you sharpen your skills? Make sure your defense is a little tighter. And just those types of things. Just growing as a fighter and trying to not be so emotional and just being more seasoned. At the same time, though, I think that emotion that you showed in that fight, it's kind of shown up at different parts in your career. And that's kind of who ruthless Robbie Lawler is, right? Like when he, when he clipped you with like a one-two and like you hit him back and then you yelled at him, you know? Like it almost reminds me of, of some other things that we've seen in your career, like during the Rory McDonald fight and like when the fight gets dirty, like that's, that brings out a certain element of you. Like was that the first time we saw that kind of in that Nick Diaz? Uh, maybe so. It's, he's, it was, now I just know when to bring it out and when it's smart and, and more tactical. But yeah, I mean, obviously I'm a fighter through and through. This is this is who I am, this is what I do, and I love to do it, and Nick comes to fight, and I'm ready. Have you guys really had any interactions over the last 17 years? Have you crossed paths? Have you been in, like, signings together? Like, have you ever talked? I don't, we've crossed paths, but I don't think it's ever been, like, uh, conversations. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a lot of respect for Nick and everything he's accomplished, and kind of, like, who he is, I mean, Obviously, the issue that I'm having right now with this weight change and whatever doesn't really change anything, but he kind of marches to the beat of his own drum, which I freaking respect. He kind of, like, doesn't take crap and just kind of he is who he is, and he, I have respect for that. One of the uh, the things that stick out also about that first fight is the commentary at one point was like, is, is has Nick Diaz gotten into the head of Robbie Lawler? And Joe Rogan goes, only Robbie knows that, but it sure looks like. <laughs> was he in your head on the first fight? No, no. I mean, I've fought, I've competed my whole life. Like, you think somebody freaking talking to me, like, things weren't going my way. That's what was freaking, you know, things weren't going my way, like. It's a sport, like that happens. It's trying to figure it out. And sometimes you don't figure it out, but like it didn't affect me or my performance. It was just part of what he was doing. I'm, I don't get rattled. I freaking fight. I fight with emotions and I, I, it's who I am. It's what I do, but it didn't get in my head. Okay. Well, last question for you. Um, I. I imagine that you have not spent 17 years thinking about Nick Diaz and wanting to fight Nick Diaz again. But once you fight, once you sign the fight, and you know you're gonna you're gonna fight him. I mean, I know I know how competitive you are, you know. And this guy has been able to walk around on this planet for 17 years and say he beat you. Like like, does that give you motivation? Have you felt that like as you prepared for this fight that like I'm I'm gonna get this guy back? No, not really, because it's it's not about getting him back. There's there's not like this hole that like 17 years that's been waiting to fill. Uh, He's a big name, like with a huge following, like a lot of clout. People are excited to watch him fight, which gears me up and, and gets me like, all right, let's, let's do this. He's freaking somebody. I'm somebody. Fans are excited. And that's, that's where it is. It has nothing to do with him other than he's a big name who, who comes to fight and fans enjoy watching him and what he brings to the table. Okay, so I'll ask one more follow-up then. For everything that you just mentioned, you know, you're right. I mean, he's a big name, you're a big name. Fans are excited about this fight. In terms of just your excitement level for it, when's the last time you were this up, this this ready to go for a fight? Uh, it's hard to say. Like, you know, you don't want to, like, dumb down this. or But, like, obviously I'm, I'm focused. Uh, I put in a... 10-week training camp for this and did all the right things and 
and put in the work, listen to my coaches even when I didn't want to and like thinking I, I know the way and the path to get to where I need to go. So I put in the work and, and did the right stuff. And uh, I mean, I think that's what shows what kind of opponent he is that I respect uh, what he brings to the table. And so that's why I put in the work. Yeah. Well, I hope that uh, no more surprises this week. I hope he's at press <laughs> conference, weigh in, and then, of course, we'll see him at the fight, man. I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks for sitting down with us. Yep, Appreciate thanks. it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.